In the video that follows this video, I give a more or less detailed explanation of the reasons why the modern interpretation of categorical logic does not assign existential commitment to universal sentences. However, that explanation is not going to be among the materials for the exam. So if you're not interested in the topic of existential commitment, or simply would like to know what the take-home message is and what is important for the exam, you can watch this video and skip the next one. However, if the assumptions behind the modern interpretation seem to you arbitrary or strange, or if you'd like to know the reasons for them, then you should definitely check out the next video. Let's begin with a quick review of some important notions. First, we know that categorical propositions contain terms, which are general nouns or noun phrases. For instance, you have dog, chair, river, book, but not adjectives. Right? We also know that categorical terms are associated with classes, that is, the class of things designated by the term. So in the case of dog, the class of dogs. In the case of chair, the class of all chairs, and so on. Also, categorical propositions, which are the subject matter of categorical logic, must have two terms, the subject term and the predicate term. The general form of the categorical proposition is S is P. It is customary to designate the subject term with an S and the predicate term with a P. Sometimes categorical terms are associated with classes that have no members. For instance, uh, unicorn or um, square circle as terms. This is because there are no unicorns or square circles. And um, when these terms are subject terms, um, we're going to call them empty subject terms. And here's where we come across the notion of existential commitment. A proposition is said to have existential commitment if the truth of the proposition requires the existence of members of the subject class. Remember that categorical propositions are divided into those that are universal and those that are particular. Um, propositions of forms I and O, that is those that begin with some, are particular propositions as opposed to A and E, which are universal. Well, um, on anybody's view, particular propositions are always going to carry existential commitment. That is, for a particular proposition to be true, the subject term must be non-empty. It must be, the, the class must have at least one member. For instance, take, uh, take a proposition of the form I, such as, some dogs are fast. Well, that implies that there are ducks. And that is because if one is true, then two must be true. Likewise, sentence three implies or entails sentence four. Because if it is true that some unicorns are not friendly, then there must be unicorns. And of course, that means that although one can be true, three can't be true, right? That is because there are no unicorns. So we said that the truth of three requires the existence of unicorns, that is the class associated with the subject terms. Since there are no unicorns, then three can't be true. And what about universal propositions? What happens to universal propositions whose subject terms are empty? So take five and six. All unicorns are pretty. These are the form A. And uh, no unicorns are pretty. Are they true or false? Well, that is going to depend on which interpretation of categorical logic you pick. There is a traditional interpretation and the modern interpretation. According to the traditional interpretation, universal propositions do have existential commitment. And uh, according to the modern interpretation, universal propositions do not have existential commitment. Here we follow the authors of your textbook, Understanding Arguments, in assuming the modern interpretation. So we're going to assume that universal sentences do not carry existential commitment. Moreover, and this can be counterintuitive, in the modern interpretation, all universal sentences with empty subject terms are taken to be true. So in the modern interpretation, both all unicorns are pretty and no unicorns are pretty come out true, due to the trivial fact that there are no unicorns. 
So in the modern interpretation, A and E prepositions are not contradictories, not even contraries, because both can be true at the same time, right? So because the subject term is empty, that is, there are no members in its class, both 5 and 6 are true at the same time. So it is possible for propositions of forms A and E to be true at the same time. They are not contradictories. And so I repeat, it is possible for both the A and E versions of a proposition of the general form SSP to be true at the same time. So these are the things you should remember. First, that in this class we'll adopt the modern interpretation of universal sentences. Second, that according to the modern interpretation, universal sentences have no existential commitment. And so that, as a consequence, the A and E forms of a subject predicate proposition can both be true at the same time. Therefore, they're not contradictories.